Persecution against Muslim, Muslim, Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats as a crime against humanity was committed in all 35 municipalities through the following acts. The imposition of restrictive and discriminatory measures involving the denial of fundamental rights, murder, cruel and inhumane treatment during attacks on towns and villages and within various detention centers, forcible displacement, unlawful detention, forced labor at front lines, appropriation or plunder of private property and destruction of private property and of cultural monuments and sacred sites. With regard to the charge of genocide, the Chamber finds that in spite of evidence of acts perpetrated in the municipalities which constituted the actus reus of genocide, the Chamber has not received sufficient evidence to establish whether the perpetrators had genocidal intent, that is, the intent to destroy the Bosnian Muslim or Bosnian Croat ethnic group as such. We shall now deal with the question of Mr. Kryznik's criminal responsibility for the crimes just enunciated. On the facts of this case, the Chamber finds joint criminal enterprise to be the most appropriate mode of liability. Therefore, other forms of liability charged in the indictment were not further considered. The Chamber is of the opinion <coughs> that the existence of a joint criminal enterprise does not presume preparatory planning or explicit agreement among its participants. The Chamber finds that a joint criminal enterprise existed throughout the territories of, of the Bosnian Serb Republic. There was a centrally based core component of the group, which included Mr. Kwajsnik, Radovan Karadzic, and other Bosnian Serb leaders. The rank and file of the joint criminal enterprise was based in the regions and municipalities of the Bosnian Serb Republic and maintained close links with the leadership in the Bosnian Serb capital of Pale. A joint criminal enterprise can exist and its members may be held liable for crimes committed by principal perpetrators in the municipalities who may not have shared the common objective of the joint criminal enterprise. It is sufficient in such cases to show that their acts were procured by the members of the joint criminal enterprise in the implementation of the common objective. The possibility that one or more principal perpetrators were not aware of the joint criminal enterprise or its objectives does not preclude a finding that the joint criminal enterprise committed crimes throughout the indictment municipalities through such principal perpetrators. The common objective of the joint criminal enterprise was to ethnically recompose the territories targeted by the Bosnian Serb leadership by drastically reducing the proportion of Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats through expulsion. The Chamber finds that the crimes of deportation and forced transfer were the original crimes of this common objective. Mr. Kreisnik gave the go-ahead for the expulsion program to commence during a session of the Bosnian Serb Assembly when he called for, and I quote, implementing what we have agreed upon, the ethnic division on the ground. End of quote. <clears throat> the criminal means of a common criminal objective may be expanded when leading members of the joint criminal enterprise are informed of new types of crime committed pursuant to the implementation of the objective, when they take no effective measures to prevent recurrence of such crimes, and when they persist in the implementation of the common objective. In this case, 
the members of the Joint Criminal Enterprise are shown to have intended the expansion of means since implementation of the common objective can no longer be understood to be limited to commission of the original crimes. <clears throat> Whereas in the early stages of the joint criminal enterprise in which Mr. Kreisnik participated, the common objective may have been limited to the crimes of deportation and force transfer, the evidence shows that the criminal means of the enterprise very soon grew to include other crimes of persecution as well as murder and extermination. This expanded set of crimes, as detailed in the judgment, came to redefine the criminal means through which the joint criminal enterprise's common objective would be achieved during the course of the indictment period. The evidence does not show that at any time during the indictment period, the crime of genocide formed part of the common objective of the joint criminal enterprise in which Mr. Kreisnik is shown on the evidence to have participated, nor that Mr. Kreisnik had the specific intent necessary for genocide. The evidence also does not support the conclusion that Mr. Kreisnik was complicit in genocide. In the Chamber's view, Mr. Kreisnik's overall contribution to the joint criminal enterprise was to help establish and perpetuate the SDS party and state structures that were instrumental to the commission of the crimes. <coughs> He also deployed his political skills, both locally and internationally, to facilitate the implementation of the Joint Criminal Enterprise's common objective through the crimes envisaged by that objective. Mr. Kryosnik knew about and intended the mass detention and expulsion of civilians. He had the power to intervene but he was not concerned with the predicament of detained and expelled persons. Mr. Kreisnik wanted the Muslim and Croat populations moved out of Bosnian Serb territories in large numbers and accepted that a heavy price of suffering, death and destruction was necessary to achieve Serb domination and a viable statehood. <coughs> Therefore, the Chamber finds that Mr. Kreisnik is guilty of commission of the aforementioned crimes through his participation in a joint criminal enterprise. We now come to the sentencing considerations. The prosecution has requested that Mr. Kreisnik be sentenced to imprisonment for life for the crimes he has committed. In determining the appropriate sentence, the Chamber has assessed the seriousness of Mr. Kreisnik's overall criminal conduct. In this regard, the party's submissions, as well as other relevant factors, as explained in the judgment, have been considered. Immense suffering was inflicted upon the victims in this case, and the consequences that the crimes have had on the Muslim and Croat ethnic groups in Bosnia and Herzegovina are profound. The crimes were committed over a long period of time, often through brutal methods with hatred and appalling lack of concern. Mr. Kreisnik's role in the commission of the crimes was crucial. His positions within the Bosnian Serb leadership gave him the authority to facilitate the military, police and paramilitary groups to implement the objective of the joint criminal enterprise. Mr. Kreisnik had a duty to tend to the well-being of the entire population as well as a duty to uphold law and, law and order. The population residing in the territory of the Bosnian Serb Republic was entitled to expect that a person of Mr. Kreisnik's authority would work to prevent or punish crimes instead of taking part 
in their commission. The Chamber finds that the following individual circumstances of Mr. Kreisnik should be accorded some, although very slight, weight in mitigation. <coughs> his lack of prior convictions, his good conduct during detention, his relatively long time in detention before his trial began, his efforts, although limited, during the indictment period to provide help to non-Serb individuals, and his age and family situation. Mr. Kwasnik, would you please stand? <coughs> For the reasons summarized above, this chamber, having considered all of the evidence and the arguments of the parties, the statute and the rules, and based upon the factual and legal findings as determined in the judgment, decides as follows. <coughs> you are found not guilty and therefore acquitted of counts one and two of the indictment, namely genocide and complicity in genocide with the intent to destroy, in part, the Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats. You are also found not guilty of count six of the indictment, namely murder as a violation of the laws of cust or customs of war. The Chamber finds you guilty on the following counts. Count three, persecution as a crime against humanity. Count four, <coughs> extermination as a crime against humanity. Count five, murder as a crime against humanity. Count seven, deportation as a crime against humanity. And count eight, forced transfer as an inhumane act as a crime against humanity. <coughs> Your responsibility for the above crimes is pursuant to Rule 7.1 of the Tribunal Statute. For your role in these crimes, we sentence you, Mr. Kreisnik, to a single sentence of 27 years of imprisonment. You are entitled to credit for the period of time you have been in custody. You were arrested on the 3rd of April 2000 and are therefore entitled to credit of 2,369 days. The Chamber stands adjourned. All rise. We will win. <laughs>